All right. Well, I want to thank you for coming to the Middle Jesus panel. Thank you, everyone. First of all, does the Portland Retro Gaming Expo freaking rock? Every year, every year I get so excited coming here because it's, 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 my, it's my peeps, my home, and I love it here. So, um, And part of my YouTube channel is all about community, and specifically what I love about my YouTube channel is bringing on people who are some of the, the coolest people in the Seattle and Portland area, and I'm surrounded by many of them here. So I want to introduce everybody. Uh, first of all, my name is uh, Jason. I'm also known as The Metal Jesus, and I have a YouTube channel. Um, I guess I'll start over on that side. So that is Radical Reggie. <laughs> Radical Reggie, and you guys know my favorite system is the PlayStation 1. So any PlayStation people in here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah and so um, I was kind of curious. I wanted them to answer sort of like what is the, the part of their collection they're kind of known for? Um, you know, what, what gets them excited in the morning when it comes to collecting. So, uh, to my left here, of course, is the immortal John Hancock. Yeah. All right, raise your hand, show me some Sega love. Sega love. Yeah, Sega. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, to me, um, I'm kind of known for my Sega, my Sega collection, but, you know, I really, really fucked everything in general, but I gotta say my passion recently has been my Sega. Really, really digging that fucking Sega Master System and some weird card variations. All right. John collects everything weird. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, and then to my right is Kinsey Burke. How's it going? Yeah. And I think it took me, like, until, like, ten seconds ago to know what I was going to say to answer your question. Okay. And, um... I was going to start with probably my weird 360 controller collection yeah. because I still get yeah. messages about it all the time. I know, like, what? Yeah, <laughs> why? <laughs> and then I also wanted to throw in quickly, I was like, what defines me? I don't know. And all I could think of was the time that got pizza guy came to the door and he stopped and he's like, damn. Just looking at your gamer. Yeah, he's like, we open the door and he's just like, oh my god. <laughs> and, and that's when you start thinking about security system, and right? Then, yeah. And then I'm like, he's going to rob us later. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. All right. And then also Kelsey. Kelsey Lewin. Hi. So you guys might know me as the weirdo who collects a lot of weird handheld stuff. Um, I guess the Wonderswan is probably like the weird defines Kelsey thing. But of course, I have an enormous Vita collection as well. And DS and all that fun stuff. I like handhelds. Uh, absolutely. So, so today's, the, the whole plan for this was no plan. <laughs> um, just because it was so many people up on the stage, so many big collectors here, uh, I thought it might be kind of fun to have a panel where you guys get to ask us questions. Uh, pretty much anything you really want, you know, just kind of go for it. Uh, you know, we, between all of us, we really cover uh, 40 years worth of gaming. And so, uh, you know, for I, I guess I didn't talk about like what I specialize in. Um, many of you know that I, I got my start right out of college working at a company called Sierra Online, and so that was like an amazing moment, and that also really defined my collecting. I love big box PC games from the 80s and 90s, and I have a, have a pretty cool collection of that stuff. And so something you don't really run into very often as well. So um, I heard that there's a roaming microphone around here, and we'd like to take questions. And then. This will also probably end up on my YouTube channel as well. So uh, we get a lot of questions in general, but it'll be kind of cool too. Do you mind taking the? This is my wife Rebecca here, by the way. Hello. 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 So do you want to just have people raise their hands? I'm Let's here. go for it and see what happens. There we go. All right. I saw him first. Sorry. What's your most treasured piece in your collection? <laughs> little, game, little game known as Barbie's Horse Adventure. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> uh, boy, um, I really, again, getting back to PC games, I really do love some of the weirder kind of 
uh, big box PC games. Uh, I recently acquired a very rare PC game that most people don't realize actually was out there. It's the very first graphical MMORPG. Um, uh, most people think that's actually Ultimate Online. It's actually Never Winter Nights for the AOL. And it came out in big box. It's actually the gold box SSI series. And so one of the rarest PC games out there it usually goes for about $400 plus. And it, you know, PC games that's fairly expensive. And so I, I didn't pay that, but I got I finally added to my collection. How about you guys? Anything you want to? In my collection, I would say, uh, oh gosh, I can't think of it right now. I guess maybe uh, everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie has a lot of uh, Japanese imports. It's really fun to kind of go over to his game room and see all of these PAL. And yeah, like a lot of like uh, shoot 'em ups and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Survival horror games that didn't make it to America and stuff like that. A lot that. of stuff you don't need to know Japanese to play, which exactly. is pretty cool. And but you can still have a lot of fun. Yep. I think for me, um, I have a Sega Master System game in my collection from my childhood from a rental store I used to go to as a kid when they went out of business. I went back and bought it. And it has the address and a sticker from the rental store still on it. Uh, and so I'm in the kid. It's a Hallmark movie. No, yeah. Yeah, but, um, but it's really special to me. I think it, was, uh, it will be possibly featured on a feature video. It's true. So yeah, John and I did a uh, Sega Master System buying guide that I'm still in the process of editing, but that'll come soon. Yeah. How about you guys? Anything? Um, I'm just still like I love collecting the like super weird things, and I remember the day. I mean, I don't know if it's my most cherished piece, but like when I got my Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, oh, yeah. you know, oh. and I love that book, love that game, and I was just like remember opening it and like going through all the the like feelings, yeah. and I was just like, this is amazing, <laughs> and so I just love like the weird, fun things like that. Yeah. So how many of you remember the Infocom text adventures? Yeah! Uh, okay. <laughs> that guy. Really old. Yeah, that's what we do. But, but the amazing thing to collect for them is that they're full of stuff in the box. Because they're text, right? There's no graphics in the game. So they pack them full of stuff to kind of spark your imagination. And they're super fun to collect for. Oh gosh, I'm going to go the nostalgic group too. Um, I still have my original Pokemon Game Boy Color and Pokemon Yellow. I have like my name in Sharpie that my mom wrote on it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So that's probably like my most cherished thing. Like that's the thing that, even if it came down to you know me getting evicted, I'm like, no, not selling that. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. That's a question for the immortal John Hancock. Yeah. Uh, I recently watched your YouTube video about your favorite original Xbox memories. Yeah. And you actually had an interesting item in the background. It was the issue number zero of the official Xbox magazine. Yeah. Can you tell us the story about how you obtained that? Is it an original yeah, print? That's classified. And, <laughs> uh, uh, question for Jason, um, Metallica or Megadeth? And what do you think of the new Metallica album? All right. So I'll start. Um, I was working at GameStop at, at the time that the uh, Xbox was launched. And so it was pretty easy for me, that came to the store. And so that's how I remember acquiring that, was like it was a promo to promote, hey, this is coming out, and we were essentially, I think, giving those out. We had a stack of them. Um, and I, you know, one thing that at the time GameStop did, which they don't do now, is like they really, they really were, were pretty liberal with like, hey, rent out games, you can take this game home, you can play it, we want you to be informed on this game that you're selling. And so I was able to get you know, several magazines and, and even games uh, free because they wanted you to be educated on what you're selling. So that's how I remember acquiring that. Hmm. Metallica versus Megadeth. Huh. It's a toughie. So, you know, Slayer. or Slayer. <laughs> okay, I need to reverse. none of you both. Yeah, it, it, you know, I mean, Metallica made four or five classic albums in the 80s. I mean, they were just knocking it out of the park. And so uh, my favorites have always been Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and also, and Justice for All, even though the oh, bass yeah. is kind of funky on that. But, and then they went the weird alternative route. Uh, alternative? Yeah, terrible. However, Megadeth's last album, like last year, Dystopia, is incredible. Really? New guitarist, new drummer, 
completely revitalized. They're amazing. So if you haven't listened to that album, it's, that's awesome. It's really good. Yep. This question from Metal Jesus. Um, you recently got the American 64 disc drive. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you hoping to do with it? Sleep with it. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, what am I hoping to do with it? You know, it, um, I'm not a big N64 collector, and so it just kind of came into my possession because uh, I'm persistent and, you know, I sort of ran into it. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Right now, I'm just kind of enjoying showing it off here. Um, and doing videos, that was my number one goal with that, is to sh share it with the world. I didn't know what it was when I first got it. Uh, the person who I got it from didn't know what it was. And so that was a really cool part about that journey was having all these, the people who worked on it at Nintendo contact me and go, yes, that's legit, or yes, that's real, and then getting the history of it. So as to what happens going forward, I don't know. I could see it ending up in someone's collection who maybe is an absolute N64 fanatic. Like mine, for free. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So she's first in line. Um, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, I don't know. So I'm just, you know, sharing. That's why I brought it here, is let other people see it and kind of enjoy it a little bit. And share it with the community. Hey, this is a question for Reggie and Old Jesus. So, when you guys introduced yourselves, you said weird Japanese imports and shoot 'em ups. Now, obviously, you guys know that Japan has some really weird shoot 'em ups. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know something we don't? What? Nice. I don't know. Do you know something I don't? <laughs> it's called Chowaniki. <laughs> what is that? It's a shoot 'em up with like oh, naked yeah. men. How do you know this? <laughs> Question. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you own that? I own a couple of them, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I own it. You learn something every day. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> it's me who likes naked men. You're going to have to But yeah, um, if you guys got a favorite shoot up, I guess I want to share with us. I would definitely love to hear uh, One of my favorite shoot ups well, as of right now, is a Diocese for PS1. That's my number one. Oh, guy. Nice. That game is insane. Uh, is it like anime ish? Or? It's, it's more like a. Or like science man. fiction, like it has a, a deep story mode, like you have to leave Earth, and, and it's like, it's, it's is, insane. Is that the one like in, uh, Star Fox? No, no, that's, uh, that's something else okay. I can't remember right now. The guy I see was the one where the guy is, is, is talking in the beginning about how Earth is, is polluted and they have to leave Earth, and it's like, a, he, he's, he has an he uh, English accent, but it's like really bad. <laughs> I can't remember if that's, that's like yeah. my number one game. It's, it's really expensive because it's like, a, I, I think it had a limited run. So it's not that many out there, so usually copies cost around two hundred dollars, but it's worth two hundred dollars. You know, but I wouldn't want to pay it again though. So. <laughs> no, my Rebecca's running around to see you guys now. Okay, my first question is for Metal Jesus. Um, how did you end up with the name? How did you end up with the Metal Jesus Rocks? And I have a gift for you. Okay. Cool. All right. So I'm gonna bring it up to you. Cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's from my man, and you know him from last year. You better try to sell that on your YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Well, thank you. Uh -huh. So how'd you put that name? Oh, it's a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Fallout Anthology. Wow, thank you so much. That's awesome. How did I get the name? I, you know, I get this a lot because it's such a weird name for a YouTube channel, right? It, you know, people want to know. So the story is that when I was working in the, in the corporate environment, I've, I've always had long hair, uh, and this is kind of before the year, the, the time of Spotify, where now everyone has every music, you know, on your phone. So I, at, at my job, I had this dedicated computer that had like 300 gigabytes of just nothing but nasty 80s 90s heavy metal you know all the stuff i really like and because i needed that to get through my day right you know it's like i listen to it all day long but i shared it with everybody within the corporation they could just connect to my share and, and listen to rock and metal yeah and uh, i remember one day i was sitting in a in a meeting and mo you know i'm wearing rock t-shirts at work you know and everyone looks a little bit more buttoned up and one of my co-workers called me the metal jesus and everyone was just like what you know what the but it stuck 
And so, and, and then from then on at work, I was known as the Metal Jesus. And then when it came time for a YouTube channel, I was like, I want something that is, that doesn't necessarily say retro 8-bit games, because I wanted to have a little more freedom in what I do, to do music, to do gamer eats, to do whatever I want to do. And so Metal Jesus Rocks just kind of stuck, and hopefully it's easy to remember. Okay, this question is for Reggie. Uh, if you could forget any RPG to play through it all the way through again, what would it be? Forget to play through it? Forget it completely, so you can play it fresh again. And, and let's, let's all add that answer. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. I already have an answer. Me too. So any game, but for particularly Reggie, I want to know the RPG. Gosh, honestly, I would say uh, The Secret of Mana. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, was, that, was, that was a game that pretty much got me like into RPGs. Uh, that was like the first one. It was action RPG, but then I started to look into more. But that was the game that really got me compelled to play them. I'm gonna go safe right here. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, like hands down. I cried. I cried. Yeah, it was pretty sad. Uh, for me, it would have to be Star Wars: Knights of the Republic. Uh, because you remember that twist. Yeah. That twist messed me up. It was so awesome. So I, I'd love to kind of relive that sort of surprise. I would say definitely Final Fantasy IX. I don't think any game has like emotionally gotten to me as much as that one did. And if I could relive that, that would be amazing. Because I'd replay it today, but it's never going to be that way. You've already cried the tears. I've already cried the tears. Yeah. <laughs> this is a tough one for me. I think I would go with Tales of Symphonia because that was the first, like... <laughs> awesome, yeah. <laughs> That was the first like JRPG JRPG that I played, and I was hooked ever since. I mean, I've played so many JRPGs since then. I, you know, I've been playing Pokemon for a long time, but like that's not really, yeah. it's not the same. So that that one, just because that was my first JRPG that really got to me. By, by the way, um, we want to start giving away some games for questions as well. So uh, if you want to come up, we'll give you one. Now everyone has a question. Because, because we happen to have Final Fantasy IX. Campaign is, campaign is so fun. Creating chaos, I apologize. <laughs> but, but we need you guys on the microphone so it picks it up for the yeah. video. And then, uh, this young man here has a question. Oh. Thank you. How are you? You go, girl. So glad we have her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm creating chaos. How did you all get into gaming? Oh, sorry, with me. Okay. Um, I started playing Tetris and Super Mario Land on my dad's original Game Boy. He had bought it to travel with him, and he just didn't really like it, so I started playing it. I was like three or four, <laughs> and it just kind of stuck. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, actually kind of similar because my dad bought the NES for him, and then I... Like, the whole story was we weren't allowed to play the NES until he beat Zelda, so I was co-pilot, and then I started playing it, and I was kind of hooked ever since. Uh, I'm, I'm old, so I do remember a time before video games, uh, and that was the arcades, and so going to, you know, and playing, jeez, I mean, Space Invaders, literally. Uh, I remember seeing Dragon's Lair at a pizza place and thinking it was ridiculous for 50 cents. Who does that? Nobody has that much money, you know? Oh, yeah. It lasts like two seconds, right? But that's definitely where I got my start. And then we got an Atari 2600. It was downhill from there. Well, my first experience was a Pong unit that my dad bought. And my dad needed video games. But my, my probably most early earliest memories other than that was playing on a Commodore 64 at a friend's house. And I was so jealous because, you know, it was a fairly conservative family, but they had all these pirated games. And I was like, the views here like, Wait a minute, these games are expensive. There's so many, it's like, oh, well, my dad's part of a Commodore 64 club. and they Like a pirate together. group? Yeah, yeah, the daisy chains <laughs> and the floppy drives together and comes home with a bunch of games. And it's like, 
Okay, I'm jealous. I'm, I'm staying the night at your house from now on. <laughs> I was around three or four years old, and my brother worked at a pizza shop, and they had arcade games in there. And uh, there was a pinball machine, and there was a punch-out machine, and I used to play both of them. But I remember I grabbed a chair, and I started playing the pinball game. You know, I had to grab a chair so I could see everything. And then uh, I guess I was doing good at it, and people started cheering me on. And I'll never forget that. Like, I got me pumped up, even though I wasn't really good at it. Really. <laughs> and um, that was pretty much the start of my, my love for video games, you know, and then Punch Out was next, and I got pretty far in that. And also a really interesting part about Reggie's collection that he doesn't talk about very often is, is your mini pinball collection. Yeah. So he has those, those where they're designed for, a, a, like, a kitchen table. Yeah. But they're meant to be, like, really authentic and stuff. He's got a pretty cool Yeah, they got, like, air pockets in it. Bumpers and everything. Not like your traditional like uh, toy pinball where it just has springs and lights up and the ball drains real fast. It's like almost like a real thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, my question is for everybody: um, which game has your favorite box art? Like, which game's box art has really stuck out to you? That's uh, 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 Yeah. Okay, so the artist is here today. At, at the show, and he, um, I forget the name of him, but he Mark did Harris. the artwork for Herzog's Vibe for Sega Genesis. There it is. That's my favorite right there. That's my favorite artwork of all time. John will buy it from you. No, I, already have it. I already have it, but that's hands down. That artist is amazing, and uh, he's got some great stories. Go, go check him out. Uh, Shadow Hearts. You guys have heard of that game? Yeah. yeah. That, that cover on the first game. Um, I'm just going to go anything working design. Oh, yeah. Like the yeah. Oil and stuff uh, line. Yeah. Oh, that's a good answer. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't specific, so like. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to say anything like the in the Atari kind of area. That was my answer, too. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like it could also double as a metal album. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, th that was going to be my answer is that, you know, in, in, in the, the museum here, if you guys haven't checked it out, is every box Atari game. And I know not everyone's into Atari, because it's so old, but the thing that sold those games was just these amazing boxes. And again, you look at it, it's like, that's not representative of the game at all. Like these little pixels, it's like, you know. But the box matter. art, it didn't matter. Like, you know, the Activision had its own design, the iMagic ones, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, this question is for all of you, um, basically, I just stumbled upon your shows and just, you know, searching for retro uh, game material because I love retro games. And I also produce on YouTube. And um, I want to know one, obviously, it's not easy to do a show regularly. So I want to know one, what is your regimen? Like, how do you, do you like, have a schedule that you do to, to, to follow to keep up, you know, making so much content? And two, uh, I don't want to sacrifice the first question for a second, but I'm from New York City. Are you guys going to have any plans to do any retro events in on the East Coast at all? Are you offering like your, you know, an extra room or something? <laughs> 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 so it's funny you ask this because we were talking about this uh, privately because Kelsey just today launched her YouTube channel. Yeah. She's all nervous about it. <laughs> and. And so she's the newest one taking this on, but but everyone on this table is has a YouTube channel that they're you know, committed to and stuff like that. So we can all kind of speak to this. I know me personally, um, this year I'm doing YouTube as my career, like it's it's my one job, and it's kind of it's a mind blowing thing to say. Like it's weird, you know, because ten years ago this job didn't really exist. Like YouTube was up, but it's you, you couldn't live off of it, you know. Um, the one thing I would say, that the advice I give people, is that you just need to be consistent. That The thing for me when I first started YouTube is that once I committed to it, I was like, this is non-negotiable for me. Like, Because I, work, I was working full-time up until February of this year. So I had a full-time job, commute, all that stuff. And I still was doing YouTube 40 to 60 hours a week on top of that. And that's what it takes to, to do that. Um, and so that's what you kind of need to commit to, to to get to a certain level of success. However, that seems shocking, but imagine if you're going to start a band. You know, people start bands all the time, and people have been doing music for an awful long time, and you know, most there's like drummers and bass players and guitarists, they're all doing that too. But if you're going to be a band, you're going to play to clubs, crappy clubs, for years at a time, and that's just kind of what it takes, and you just kind of have to commit to that. And, you know, that's my advice. Anything else you guys would add? 
I just, I think for me, um, I, I, I've learned a lot from, from Jason about keeping a regimen, and uh, it's helped me, um, it's helped me and just, just being real, just being myself, I'm working on that. And uh, my recent video is just, you know, just down to earth conversation and not worrying about what it, how aesthetically pleasing it is, just keeping true to myself. And, you know, knowing your fan base, and, and the answer to the question about New York, first of all, I love gamers from around the world. I'd love to go to New York, but it, it comes down to money. You know, I'm, I'm a teacher, so, you know, nine months out of the year, I'm pretty much stuck in, in my hometown. But, you know, in the summertime, you know, if, if any show would want me, I'd love to go there, but it's going to take hotel and plane ticket. And that's, that's not negotiable. So, yeah, there you go. This is a question for everybody. Um, what's your favorite Pokemon game? <laughs> it's, it's just me, isn't it? <laughs> okay, you can. Okay, good. Well, do you want to start with people who can't answer? <laughs> I tried playing Pokemon. I. Have you played Pokemon Snap while possibly drinking something? Because it's yeah. great. <laughs> okay, so I should do that. one of the you things should? about Pokemon yeah. is there's so many great spin-off games, so even if you're not a big Pokemon person, and I do think Pokemon is a game you have to get into when you're younger, or at least it seems that most people only stick with it if they play it mm -hmm. as a kid. And it doesn't matter if you're a kid now or you were a kid in the 90s. Like, that seems to be what it takes, because all the other people I've talked to you know. it's, it's a generational thing for me. I, I was selling Pokemon cards at GameStop, and I'm not a fan of Pokemon. And I've said that I'm on my channel, and I've been honest about it. You just pissed off half the room. Thank you. But I'm being real. I mean, I just, I'm older. I'm older. I'm not a Pokemon fan. It just, it wasn't for me. It's no offense to anybody. It just, it's not I, like, I think the combat's fine, but I always want, like, a deeper, like, story progression. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's RPG light. You know, yeah. Uh, I think my favorite is probably Pokemon Crystal. That one, and it, that has probably among the deeper stories mm -hmm. of the Pokemon game. But you're still not going to get like the depth of a real JRPG. You, you got to fill in the gaps yourself. Yeah, those are your Pokemon, and this is your this quest. is your adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to be the very best. I think yeah, that like Monster Rancher. Monster Rancher is cool too. Monster Rancher fan, just not. I think my favorite oh. Pokemon game is Pokemon Yellow. Favorite Pokemon spinoff is Pokemon Snap. Yeah. <laughs> Reggie, did you have anything to say? <laughs> She's calling you out, Daddy. You know what? I think uh, the Pokemon games are pretty good. I don't really care for them. I just had too many bad experiences with Pokemon. Don't want to meet that Pokemon in that alley. I first started, you know, it was pretty crazy. You know, I was working at Kmart at the time, and just like people were just going oh, yeah. crazy for it. Oh, like, oh yeah. That was probably. I was really sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I can really. This is a question for everybody. Uh, do you guys feel responsible for the resurgence in the uh, retro gaming community? No. <laughs> Anyone else? You know, we've had this conversation recently because people call call us out on the comments like, you know, we're raising the price of games or whatever. And it's like, you know, I, these guys can attest to it. For the most part, I don't... The conversation of price will come up before. Like, you know, it should be mentioned. And my answer is always... The price doesn't matter because I don't have any control over it, and they fluctuate. And also people will play ROMs, and they'll get them on the virtual console. So it's really too much for us to kind of, I mean, are the prices of, of retro games rising? Absolutely, we all know it. But also, too, you can collect for the PSP. You can collect for Wii. You can collect for PlayStation 2. You know what I mean? You don't have to collect for Super Nintendo. If, if you get in that market, that's going to cost you, yeah. you know. And to me personally, like out here on the floor, I don't look at that stuff. I don't look at Super Nintendo games because I know that I'm competing with everybody else. But I'm looking at every Vita game, PlayStation, you know, PSP games. There are Vita games here? A few. Yeah. Yeah. At your booth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry, do you guys want to answer this yeah, too? Well, I would just say it's a shocker for some younger generations, but the truth is retro gaming has been popular for a long time before YouTube. You know, Atari, when eBay first started, when you could sell an Atari for hundreds of dollars. So it's 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 not anything new. Everybody thinks it's new because someone says something on YouTube and the price is spiked. But the truth is that there's been peaks and valleys for, you know, 20 years. 
Also, too, you know, we're focused on video games, but take a look at people who collect sneakers. Have you looked at that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Like, you think this stuff's expensive, you have no idea. Like, I, it's nuts. Yeah, I think it's just like a nostalgia thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the same thing happened with the Atari and the right. NES. Once those people who played it as kids, who may have taken a hiatus from video games, once they're in their late 20s, thir you know, early 30s, all of a sudden they're like, remember when we did that? And then they go back and buy it. Never so it kind of goes in like kind of waves. Like now, yeah. kind of like it's 64 is time to shine. Yeah, give like, it 10 years for the Wii. Pick them up now when they're a dollar. There is a way to get this cheap. You just have to be ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. And as far as with the games raising the price, like like after we do videos, you have to think about it like this: uh, when developers uh, put these games out, they, they didn't want them to be hidden gems. You know, they wanted their games to sell. They might not have the commercial to push the games. You know, like you know. Commercial yeah. stuff like that, or you know, but you know, and even if they do go up in price, they'll just go up for a little while and then they'll come back down. You know, it's not like they're gonna go up forever. You know, these people are just trying to capitalize on just a hidden gem talk. But. Yeah, I, I'm much more interested in sharing good games, you know, yeah. or on you know, decent games that people don't know about. That's my number one focus. Okay, I have never visited your YouTube channel whatsoever. And this is the first time I've ever heard of you guys. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. uh, but based off of what I've heard, I want to know what's the worst game across any system you have ever played. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go ahead. With Drake and the Ninety Nine Dragons. Xbox. Who's played that? I am so so sorry. <laughs> Can't think about it. So the first level. And the, the second level is a reverse of the first level without enemies. It's, it's like the worst thing ever, and I recommend playing it um, with a friend oh, okay. if you really don't like that. I have another answer for if you don't like your friends. Um, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Oh. I'm a huge Animal Crossing fan. That game is the biggest disappointment I've ever played. Because of the, you know, you have high expectations yeah. for a series you like. Yeah. So I'm sure yeah. there are worse games out there, but that's that was like the most soul crushing. That's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's how I felt kind of with No Man's Sky. Granted, it wasn't like a whole series. Ooh, it was just like I know. I'm sorry, but, but it was more like I've been waiting for this I know, stupid, so excited. stupid game for like two years, and it came out, and I was like, yeah. ah, this is the worst. <laughs> yeah. I spent eighty dollars on that collection. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think for me, I've had some disappointments for sure. I know for me personally, I love the Tony Hawk series and like Tony Hawk 2, 3, and 4. And then they added like the, the jackass crap in there. It's like, and then all of a sudden you're, and then, it, and then you're running, it was, I'm going to get angry. <laughs> Just give me skateboarding and a punk soundtrack. That's yes. all I want. I know. So. Don't sell a broken game. And I say it's Tony Hawk. I would, that reminds me, we were having a conversation though, uh, while at Sierra, unfortunately, we shipped some broken games. I mean, literally, they were unfinished. And, and this happened because Sierra was going through a big transition at the time. And while I was working there, we shipped a game called uh, Outpost, which is a strategy game that is literally broken. You can't finish it. And it took many patches to get that thing to work. It was an embarrassing time. That was definitely not a proud moment for us. I say for me the worst game that I feel is unplayable is Night Trap. You know, uh, you know, I love Dana Plato, and that's the reason I had I had the game. But it's like, man, uh, I could not do it. You tried, though. You tried to get through it. I actually to watch the whole thing. I had to watch a YouTube video of someone playing through it so I could see the story. But it's, it's definitely unplayable. It's nothing you're gonna pop in when you have a party or anything. It's just like, it's Depends on the party. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love the show, by the way. You guys are great. Um, you all have pretty sizable collections. Is there any one game or system or accessory that still eludes you to this day? Like the one thing you still can't find that you really want in your collection? Uh -oh. I Yeah, I can answer this. Um, I had it in my hands just this weekend. Uh, I was uh, shooting a Sega Saturn buying guide, and in doing so, uh, you gotta show Panzer Dragon Saga, which is one of the yes. best RPGs of that generation. But it only came out in Saturn, limited numbers, very rare, very expensive. Anna, who's sitting up here in the front, was so gracious <laughs> to do that video with me. 
and she left it in my house, and I, I just, I'd walk by it like this, you know, hey, how you doing, you know? You, yeah, it was, it, so I had it for a brief moment, but, uh, yeah. Although, I, I touched it, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you rubbed it on my butt. It was, yep. yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. So I'd love to get a copy of that someday. So many. I mean, for me, it's like there's ten things I don't want, but the uh, blue cart variations for Sega Master System are very difficult for the U.S. library. And they're late release, 1990, uh, for the and they're they're Sega Master System games that were relaunched with the Master System 2. I know I'm getting really obscure here. Long story short, <laughs> Ghostbusters for the Sega Master System blue cart variation. It's eluded me. The other thing that's stupid that I'm missing is the greatest hits, uh, PlayStation 1, NFL Blitz 2001. Yeah, so, so John, John's going for a complete greatest hits, the, the one with yeah. the green spines and the hates. I, yeah, yeah, I thought I had everything, and I'm missing that game. And then someone sent me a pic. This exists, by the way, you don't have it. it was like, hey, send me a pic, and I'm like, what do you do that? Oh, you're right, and I feel terrible. <laughs> Every time you talk, it's like, oh, I need it for you, I know. For you guys. For me, so I think my biggest problem with me collecting is there's so many things I want, but I'm so cheap. <laughs> and, like, I still remember, like, so I really want a Vectrex. That's, like, my thing right now. But I'm also, like, $150. Ugh. So I remember, like, turning them down for, like, 80 so now I hate myself and I want one. Like, <laughs> I have a similar situation too. There's a lot of import games that have uh, spiked a lot in the last couple years that I really regret not getting when they were a couple hundred and now they're like 600. Um, LSV on the PS1 is one of those. Mm -hmm. Had that in my hands when it was $300 and it's like 600 now and I, it's getting to, like too high for me to probably ever get at this point. <laughs> Uh, for me, it would be, uh, it was actually two things, uh, a Turbo Duel and a, a Amiga 32. Is it Amiga CD32? Yeah, mm -hmm. that, those are the systems I actually want, but I haven't pulled the trigger on them. I just don't, I can't find an Amiga CD. And Turbo Duel, I was told that it's better to get a PC engine instead because it's built better. Or a Turbo Graphics CD. Oh, Turbo Graphics CD. Yeah, US, depending on where you want to go, but yeah, it's built better. Yeah, so. so we need to wrap this up, so two more questions. And Rebecca's walking around there. So, learning from experience when it comes to collecting games, I know some games get a little, it's, when you find them, they're like really expensive, but you just really, really want that game. I had that problem with Xenoblade Chronicles. If there was any game system accessory that you guys had in your history of collecting that you really, really want, but it was really, really expensive, and you couldn't like adjust the price in your favor, what would be one particular item, game, console, or accessory? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's really expensive that we would pull the trigger on. Oh, yes. oh okay. okay. Um, you know, it would probably actually be a Tempest Arcade for me. I've wanted one forever, and I know they just keep going up. They're like 1100 now. <laughs> but I still really want one. Those vector graphics are beautiful. I think if someone was like, it's beautiful, do you want it? I might be like, yes. <laughs> Uh, I have a couple DS games that I'm just like, it's, well, it's not getting any cheaper. Uh, Solitaire Robo, um, Theresia. There's, uh, there's a couple that are just like, they're like 90 bucks now, but are they ever going to get any cheaper? Probably not. The uh, 1970s Kiss Pinball Machine. Oh, yeah. Oh, Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yes. I think you need Do it. Do I have room for it? No. <laughs> Six away. Yeah, I know. Take some of those games off your Yeah. <laughs> I'm six away from a Super Nintendo set, so it's at this point, it's like, man, I got that far, yeah. I'm going to pull the trigger and have to spend the money on Aero Fighters at some point, and it's like, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Yeah. It's going to hurt, but, you know, I'm six away, and I've had some fans donate some games along the way, and I'm not expecting them to donate that. I'm just going to have to do it, probably. And for me, it'd probably be the hybrid of uh, Heavy Pac Man arcade machine. There you go. Yeah. Classic. All right, last question. And also, this question, they're going to get a DS signed by all of us. And, by the way, we've been taking pictures on this for months. <laughs> you have no idea what's on here, do you? Be afraid. 
Richie, this goes out to you. Um, I'm wondering, what's your favorite ratcheting plank of all time? <laughs> like I laughed at you, it's, it's, uh, size matters. It was <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite one. Do I have time for one more? Yeah, let's do one more for everyone. Someone ask a question for all of us. Anyone? Anyone for everybody? Make it good. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> what? What game or game system do you regret selling or giving away the most? <laughs> I don't know. This one, so, you want to go? Um, so it's it's a game system, but it's what the game system was in. So I had a the GameCube Interact. And I had it forever as my storage unit. What is that? It's like from the like stores, like a kiosk. Oh. Yeah, I had one of those, but I had to get out of my storage unit. It wouldn't fit in my car. It had to go the way of the dumpster. Oh. <laughs> I think it was the worst day of my life. <laughs> so I can I can add to the GameCube woes. So I worked at a GameStop when all the demo kiosks were coming out, and I had essentially other stores knowing that I was collecting these, I compiled a near complete collection. And I bagged up two packages to Goodwill to donate. Uh, I used to give, give my extra stuff there, and I accidentally bundled it all up and gave it to them and dropped it off. All my, and it was a wrong box, and with some other rare games in there, and just, I don't know what else I lost. Like it was, that was some of it. Though. There was like wow. almost over twenty of the kiosk discs and some of the very rare ones. Did you try to recover it? No. But it was a great name for somebody else. Or yeah. I, I, I just you know I you know, I gave it up and if I gave it up I gave it up. I'm not I'm not going to take it back. Uh, I was actually 18 and I was actually running to the bus and I had my Sega CD in my backpack and the backpack was open. And it, Freaking fell out and smashed. It made the worst sound ever. <laughs> <laughs> You're reliving it now, aren't you? Oh, that yeah. hurt, that, that's I'm really doing really it right well. now. I mean, I felt it, but that was the worst <laughs> thing ever. I had to save up all my money to get that. So, uh, did everybody go yet? Uh, Kelsey. Okay, Kelsey. Um, I sold my gold Toys R Us edition N64 with two controllers for two dollars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I think for me, I used to be an editor for a tech gaming comp uh, site, and I used to get just everything from Sony, every single release that would come out, for pretty much for the 2000s. And a lot of press kits that at the time, I just got every day, I just didn't even think about. Um, I just threw them all away. It's like I didn't, at the time I didn't care. Now those are extremely hard to find because there's like 20 copies of that stuff somewhere. So I'm kicking myself for a lot of that. So I have a person here that says they have a great question that will tie up the entire. The thing is, we're person. running out of time for the next panel. Okay. Yeah. Do we need to? Okay. We yeah, need to. We, unfortunately, we, we need to. We need. We have to stop. Yeah. yeah, we're about ten minutes over at this. Point. Okay. Oh, we are. We're All right. So, so guys, we're gonna. Well, thank, thank you, everyone, sorry. for coming. But we're gonna do a signing outside of there. So don't rush the stage. Go out, and then we'll meet you out front here. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.